I received an email from a company called Brainstorm Force. They are the development team behind the WordPress theme Astra, which is a fairly popular theme on the market. And apparently they have spent a little while working on a page builder called Astra. Now they've asked me to take a look at it and give my thoughts. And I told them I would with the exception, the rule of I'm not going to do a sponsored video. This is just a straight up honest review of my thoughts on this page builder. So I went ahead and installed it on a local website in WordPress. And I just wanted to share with you that experience. All right, so I've just gone ahead and installed Spectra onto this brand new WordPress installation. Just for reference, we are using uh, the 2022 theme, which is the current WordPress released theme uh, and WordPress 6.0.2. So we're working in WordPress 6. Now, I don't know how recently Spectra has been updated. Um, I don't know how long it's been out. I don't know anything about it. I just know that I want to take a look at it and I'm curious to see, you know, what kind of what this offers. So the way that this works, my understanding is that this is essentially a page builder that builds upon Gutenberg. So if you're not a fan of Gutenberg, you may not like this builder at all. Um, personally, I'm indifferent to Gutenberg. I think it is a fine platform, but I think the transition between the original uh, WYSIWYG builders and Gutenberg has been a relatively rough road for some people. I don't mind it too much, but it's not um, it's not everybody's favorite. So this is going to be building on top of Gutenberg. Um, it's not going to have its own custom interface like something like Oxygen or Bricks would, but let's kind of see how that compares. Uh, this is the welcome page, and there is a video here where the developer or whoever is just kind of going through the platform just to give you a quick guide and walkthrough. I like that it's included here because especially with tools like this, um, people need instructions, and so being able to... Uh, find this information easily is pretty good. I did watch a couple minutes of this tutorial and for the most part, it's pretty solid in terms of their um, instructions. So pretty good there. Um, if we go into the block slash extensions menu, this these are all the elements that Spectra is going to be adding into Gutenberg. Um, so we have containers, headings, info boxes, timelines, uh, carousels, price lists, tabs, testimonials. Um, there's even things like display conditions, which I want to look at how that conditional logic works. Um, one thing that I really like about this is you can toggle off elements that you don't want to use. And I don't know this for a fact, but I would assume that this is going to make the builder less greedy in terms of the resources that it uses on your server. And so you could potentially speed up the builder by removing and disabling elements that we're not going to use. For example, uh, this site is definitely not going to have any After Effects Lottie animations, so we could just turn that off and not load, theoretically, the scripts or CSS or anything required for that. So very, very cool. I like that functionality. Um, it's something I've not seen in builders like Bricks and Oxygen, but then again, those builders are pretty intelligent in the way that they load their scripting, and so they probably don't need to do this. Um, but this is a good solution, I think, for um, for this type of issue. So uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of these here. Specifically, some of the more complex things I want to look at are, like I said, the conditional logic display conditions, as they call it, and some of these other elements just to see kind of what the overall style is. Now let's take a look at the settings of the builder. Um, so the first thing we have are editor options. So our default content width, 1140 is pretty standard. Um, con container padding, container elements gap. So you can kind of set here. Um, it doesn't look like I can change this from pixels to rem or any other unit. So there is a negative there. Um, definitely wants to be able to see this uh, being able to be changed to something else to a different unit value. Um, you can change the default gap spacing, um, whether you not whether whether or not you want to collapse the panels in the editor while you're building. Um, there is a copy paste styles feature that they have that we're going to leave that on, and automatic block recovery um, to automatically recover any erroneous blocks that may occur on your web pages. This will save you time spending save you time spent on clicking all those attempt block recovery buttons. I don't know. What this means, I'm not familiar enough with Gutenberg to know is block recovery an issue. Um, if it is, that's a whole nother concern. I'm going to turn it on 
It sounds like something I might want. Let's go to asset generation. So it does create... Um, so Spectra loads CSS and JS inline on the page by default. That is not great. I definitely would like to see them change the default to... Um, it, to separate CSS and JS files. Now it says, if you want to generate separate CSS and JS files, enable this option, but it is on. So even though it says it loads inline by default, the option to load externally is also on by default. So there's a little bit of wording confusion there. Um, definitely it's a good thing that this is on by default, but they should maybe not say that it's this by default. Um, and then asset regeneration if you're facing issues, always good to have that option. Templates. Um, so Spectra comes with templates that are pre-built. So this is basically whether or not you want to have those visible. We'll take a look at those. Version control. So you can roll back to previous versions. I really like seeing this functionality in plugins uh, and themes, especially those that have updates that you may uh, run into issues with. So I like that. The enable beta option lets you view uh, potential beta versions. It's not going to update automatically, which is obviously a good thing, um, but you know, good to have. Any of the legacy blocks, we'll leave that off. Performance, um, whether or not you want to load Google Fonts locally, probably would want to turn that off. Um, and then you can... Okay, so you can basically determine which Google Fonts are going to be available for use. So probably a good idea if you were to be building a website uh, in Spectra is to enable this and then limit it to just the font families that you want to be using that match your brand. Block settings. Uh, so don't know why it's called block settings. I'm assuming maybe if there were different blocks that had settings, they'd be here, but just for recapture keys. And then you can enable a uh, coming soon page. You just get to pick a page from your list here to be that. Um, I would like to see this title changed from coming soon to uh, maybe maintenance mode or something like that because my initial thought when I clicked this was going to be that I would see a list of upcoming features that were going to be added into the builder. So um, not really the best wording here. Again, uh, I think that's mainly the, the biggest issues that I've seen so far. Um, but that's all of the settings. It's very minimal in terms of what you can actually modify and change. And it's just about the actual builder. So we're just going to go ahead, work on a page and get into uh, the editing process. So we're going to add a page. Again, this is the WordPress 2022 theme. We're just going to call this Spectra test. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to set our page template to blank because I don't want the theme to uh, kind of give us any uh, styles in here. So cool, got a blank page. Let's inspect this real quick. Now this is mostly the 2022 theme, but there is a whole bunch of uh, stuff that gets loaded into here. Um, but the WC WP site blocks um, div is empty. So let's go ahead and add a block. So if, you, we, if we click up here, we have blocks here and Spectra has kind of separated their blocks from the rest. So at least we know uh, what's what. So I'm kind of gonna ignore the default Gutenberg blocks and just look at Spectra. So let's go ahead and build in a container. Let's remove that default block. Um, let's just do a one column container for now and take a look at the settings that we have. So it says there are presets here and there are little images to represent what these presets are. But there's no tooltip on hover, so uh, I really don't know what any of these means. Uh, if I click on this and then hit preview, nothing happens. Maybe if I let's let's put a heading in here first. Um, let's center that, uh, make it big. Let's go back into our container, select this preview preset, and hit updates. Let's preview that. I don't know. Uh, let's change it to a different one. I don't know what these presets are, and that's a problem because this builder, my the, the way that it's built using Gutenberg tells me that it's not going to be for professional developers. It's going to be more for people trying to build websites for their businesses or personal websites. Um, and that's great, but I don't know what these presets are. 
So I, I, I don't know why I would use them. So let's turn them off. Um, container. So, okay, we can set the container width and the content width separately. So the container is going to be the outer box and the content width is, of course, going to be the actual width of the content inside. So we're going to leave that at full width. That's unboxed. This is our... Uh, content width. Now it does look like we can change the units from pixels to percent to viewport width, but again, we're not getting REM or EM, which I know is more of a developer focused um, unit or something that people who are not developers are not really going to know about, but I still would like to see that added as an option. Same thing for uh, minimum height here. We can change the HTML tag that's being used for this, which I think is great. So let's change it to section. Um, overflow visible. Uh, we can change our flex properties, which is good. So row, see, see, so these have here, like I hover over this and it says row reverse, which says to me that the developers obviously know how to set tooltips. So these presets should have tooltips and just come up with a simple title that says uh, section with shadow or, or something like that just to showcase what it is that this preset's supposed to be. Anyway. Um, flex properties, that's all great stuff. It's centered by default, which is nice and good. Uh, no wrap is on. I'm just going to turn it to wrap. I, I feel like wrap should be probably on by default, but again, this is just a personal preference here. Um, when we go to the style tab here, we can set our background. So we can either do a color, a gradient, an image, or a video. So that's nice. The video is, everything is through the WordPress media library. Um, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and do a gradient. Um, just pick some nice colors here. It's interesting that they have it um, uh, kind of transparent by default. That's kind of weird. Maybe, maybe the, well, I, I'm assuming you can probably put an image behind it. Um, we can set it to linear or radial. That's fine. So you can't do super complex things, um, but I can add an additional item in there, uh, the, calling a control point, which is fine. So that's cool. Um, let's change this a little bit just because I'm picky. Yeah, let's go ahead with yeah. Let's let's go ahead with something like this a little bit, a little bit better. Okay. We can change color, which I'm assuming is text color. So that's the default text color for the section, which I like to see inherit being used. So that's nice. But I'm assuming if I go into the heading, I can override that. So if I go here, I can override that. And I can also set the, um, the text color to a gradient, which is nice. Um, a lot of builders don't have that as default, uh, as a default capability. Um, Oxygen, for example, requires you to know how to do the CSS necessary to get that to work. So um, I like to see that gradient uh, text is, is a very cool uh, thing to be using uh, nowadays. Let's see, we can change the link color on hover by default. We can change the box shadow. Again, these are, so now I can see that preset. If I hover over that, now I can actually see that shadow. But I can easily, more easily tell what this is supposed to be because I'm on the box shadow section. I don't know what just a inner container preset is meant to be. Um, shape dividers, I like to see that. Let's see, they've kind of options they've got here. Um, curve, cool. Book. So some some pretty generic shape dividers in that regard. But it's nice. It's going to be a nice feature to have. And we can set our spacing. So this is going to be our row and column gap and our padding. So let's give the section a top and bottom padding of 100 and some side padding of 20. And let's preview this. Looks nice. So let's take a look at the HTML and kind of see uh, if it's using. OK, so there is some responsiveness in here at this breakpoint, you see how it's losing the padding when we get to here? Um, not the best. So looks like if I go down, hmm. So, okay. 
So instead of inheriting the values that I'm setting at desktop and taking it down, it has a completely separate value uh, for, I'm assuming most things, uh, definitely padding for desktop, tablet, and mobile. Now, obviously it's good to have responsiveness built into this. If it didn't, that would be a big problem. But this should, this mobile or tablet padding or whatever should be, unless I've put something in there to override it, it should be inheriting from the desktop. This should not immediately just go down to the default 10 pixel padding. Um, and if I remove this, it doesn't even, I, I can't just have it inherit at all. I have to set a value. So I would have to go in here for each, um, each breakpoint and add in the separate padding to get it to be consistent across the site. Uh, that's definitely annoying. Add, please add in some inheriting capabilities for that. All right, let's take a look at these HTML. Okay, so inside this, we have a container for the post content. We have the section uh, container tag that we added. We have the inner container for that. And then we have a div containing the heading and the heading itself. It's not too much divception. It's pretty okay. Um, I, I think they've done an okay job at that. I'm assuming as we get into more complex pages, there are going to be dividers and other elements that don't necessarily need to be there. So, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but for the most part, it seems okay. Let's go ahead and add in another section here. Let's add a container, let's say a three column container. Um, just gonna add in some padding above and below it. I'm not gonna mess with mobile. Um, and let's take a look at some of the other elements that we have. So container, heading, image, buttons, add multiple buttons to redirect the user, uh, info box, call to action, block quote, content timeline. Let's take a look at the content timeline. This is not gonna be good with multiple columns. Can I change the number of columns in a section? That's a good question. Um, hmm. Let's remove this. Oh. Let's remove the content timeline. So I can I can remove, yeah, I can remove columns here, um, but it doesn't affect the width of the others. So if I have three columns and I remove two, um, it doesn't resize them to 50%, which is fine. Um, it's just something you have to be aware of. Let's remove this other one, go back to a single column. Let's just go with 80% and put in that content timeline there because I do want to see how that's kind of laid out. That's kind of cool. So in the content timeline elements, oh, that's a child element. We can set the orientation. So have the, the row here be along the left, the middle or the right. It's got this JavaScript interaction where the scroll bar kind of here progresses as we go down, which is pretty cool. We can decide whether or not to display the date. We can change the heading sizes for the elements in here. We can change the connector icon. We can change the icon size, the connector thickness. Yeah, this is great. Again, I, I, I actually do like the way that this builder is put together. Um, but I don't think it's going to be something that's too heavily used for a developer. I think this is either going to be a designer focused builder or a non-developer business owner sort of builder. And for that, for what it is, I think it works really, really well. There's a lot of tools in here to build a pretty decent site. And if you find a theme, now so Spectre does not do headers or footers. So if you find a theme that has a decent header or footer, you could use Astra. Um, that's the, the theme that they probably recommend that it goes with considering they build it. 
Um, you could probably use the Divi theme. You, I mean, you could use anything with this, anything that's going to support Gutenberg content. Um, and most themes nowadays are going to. Uh, let's take a look real quick at some of the templates that they have built into here. A lot of these look great. I mean, they really do. A lot of these look really, really nice. Hmm. I mean, I mean, look at this. Look at this coffee house template. Let's import this because we've got elements in here that are overlapping. Um, we've got a grid here. We've got reviews in here. Let's just remove. Oh, is it going to let me? Okay, there we go. Let's just remove the sections I added. And let's preview this. So this, when importing the templates, there are some things that aren't transferring over. For example, this text should have been white. It was white in the picture. Um, so that's not the best. But you can do, and it does look like, it does look like, um, like this padding is not coming right. So things here and there that you would have to fix if you're using templates, but it does look pretty solid. So some things that I'd like to see added to this builder based on this uh, 20 minutes that I've been looking at it are the first thing I'd like to see is a built-in CSS editor. Um, I know this is not a theme, it's a plugin, but there is no way that I've seen to inject header and footer scripts directly with this. And I think at this point, it's such a simple thing in the WordPress hook system to add that anything that calls itself a page builder or a site builder really needs to have it built in because otherwise you're going to end up with um, people having to add third-party plugins or anything like that, or like code snippets or whatever. Like Oxygen doesn't have it and it's ridiculous. W why? It needs to have a built-in header and footer injection script system and I don't get why builders like this don't put them in. Like add that, you definitely want one. Um, e even if for just for tracking scripts, like business owners who aren't necessarily, um, super tech savvy are still going to have to put that stuff in and you don't want them to have to use a separate plugin. If you can just keep the number of plugins on the site as low as possible. I mean, that's going to be your best option there. Um, in that same vein, I want to see the ability to add custom, uh, CSS style scripts and custom JavaScript scripts, um, or CSS style sheets. Uh, and custom JavaScript files to the builder without needing something separate like code snippets. Again, just a super simple thing. It can be in the Spectre settings. It can just be global. You don't need to add uh, page specific things. Although if you did, that would be really, really nice. Um, and I just realized that I never looked at the conditional logic. So let's look at this. Display conditions. We can do it based on the user state. So if they're logged in or out the user role, so we can hide it for specific roles, the browser, which is interesting, okay, or the operating system. So those are your display conditions. So uh, another thing I'd like to see added is being able to do display conditions based on um, uh, custom fields and data like that that you would usually see in a conditional logic a tool. Now I don't know how that would necessarily work because as far as I know, Spectrum or Spectra, sorry, does not have the ability to add templates. So you cannot add a blog template or uh, things like that. So that's another thing that I would like to see added. Um, templates. This is a really solid tool. Let me add templates and use dynamic data in them so that I don't have to go somewhere else to do that. I don't want to have to build every single blog post using this tool. Um, and I, I don't want to have to, um, like if I'm going to use this to build my site, I don't want to have to use something else um, to create a template for my posts. Like let me do that in here and that would be really, really cool. There's a lot of features missing. Um, things like that, simple things that are going to make the lives of whoever is using this builder seriously a lot, lot better. Um, but it's a solid foundation. I mean, the WordPress devs have done a great job with Gutenberg 
And this team has done a pretty solid job with building upon that and making it even better and putting in some of the things that Gutenberg should add or maybe will add down the line. So uh, at the end of the day, it's a solid builder. I, I would definitely recommend this to anybody who is trying to build a website for themselves um, over a tool like Wix, for sure, over a tool like Webflow if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, over a tool like Squarespace because you get the functionality of WordPress built into it. So this is a pretty solid starting tool. I think there's a long way to go. There's a lot of things that they can add, but at the end of the day, it's pretty good. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this impromptu review of Spectra. If you are a developer and you have a product you want me to look at, send me an email. You can find my email uh, you can either fill out a contact form on my website or you can find my email in my uh, YouTube channel about section. Um, I'm always looking for more content and things to do. So if you do have stuff like this, don't be afraid to let me know. I'd be happy to take a look at your product. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.